All right, so here's the deal. More often than not, whenever I do a troubleshooting type video, we'll talk about this right here, video TDR failure. I get people that will write me one into, uh, hey Jay, here's my problem. Can you do a video about my problem? Well, I find that almost all these types of problems, and I get, a, especially after the New World video, I get people writing me all the time just going, I've got this weirdness happening with my video card, or this is happening, this is happening, and not just New World, but just general usage problems. And I accidentally induced a problem that's the perfect opportunity to take you guys along for the ride to how to fix a lot of these issues easily and for free. So you'll notice right now, everything's fine. Mouse is moving, look, I'm moving this cursor around. It's gonna freeze. Whoop, it froze once, it's gonna freeze again. Wait for it, there it is, it's done. System's gonna go black, and that, Display port now is completely inactive. Watch, I'm unplugging it, I'm plugged it into a different display port. The screen will come back on, but with the blue screen that didn't show up. And that's when it had that video TDR failure. Now oh, that time it's not coming back on. I showed you guys the blue screen a moment ago. But that's fine, here's what we're gonna do. We are going to show you guys how to fix this and most of your video card problems today. We interrupt this video to bring you a special message from iFixit. No, we interrupt this interruption with this interruption. That new stuff from iFixit. Wish you had a new graphics card, but inventory sucks. Fix the inventory problems with iFixit. Whoa, don't drop it. Can't fix that with iFixit. Just kidding, yes you can. Wish you could take iFixit with you anywhere, but your pockets aren't big enough. Introducing the new Moray. And the new Minnow. Take them with you anywhere. So get iFixit for your loved ones, or just get them for yourself. Okay, so the main thing we've got to do is we've got to download a utility called DDU. Now, I know people right now are going, oh, really, Jay, the clickbait, this is DDU video. No, I want to demonstrate to you how important DDU actually is. We've got a known good graphics card on here. It's our RTX 2080. Um, what's happening right now is because we crashed several times on our startup, uh, it detected that it wasn't, like, there was a problem in Windows. The only way that you can get to safe mode, which is where we're gonna perform this fix, is by either having a solid known working boot, which as you guys will see, I've got like all of six seconds to try and get that to work, or have the system fail or crash like this more than once, usually the third time, will then initialize an automatic recovery option. So what I'll show you first is how to get into this with the automatic recovery. So we do advanced repair options, Go down to troubleshoot, go down to advanced options, go down to startup settings, and then when you hit restart, that will then give us our restart options. If you do have a working system, and you're just getting like blue screens or crashes with weird driver messages popping up with all kinds of gibberish you don't understand, but your, your, your Windows is otherwise not locking up like we're demonstrating here, you just hold left shift while going to hit, clicking the Windows key and then clicking the power button, left shift, restart, hold left shift until you see it says restarting, and then you can let go. It will then bring up this exact menu that I just showed you where we drill down to this setting where we can get to startup settings. So now that we're on the same page here, the other thing you're gonna need, and if you don't have a system that will allow you to boot to Windows, you'll need to do uh, safe mode with networking, or if you have another computer like a laptop or something with a USB drive, get a USB stick and download DDU, which is a driver or display driver uninstaller. Just do a Google search, DDU driver, and then you'll find the install. I'm not gonna put a link down below because every time I do that, I accidentally end up DDoSing whatever repository it is. And because of how many of you are gonna download it, I don't wanna do that. So you all can find different places to get it. It's all essentially the same. We are gonna enable um, enable safe mode with networking because I want to see if we can actually get it and download it from there because there is an update versus the version that we have. Now the reason why this might seem like such a simple fix, both AMD and NVIDIA drivers include in the options a clean install. The problem is the clean install from within the driver installer is a placebo effect. It's not truly wiping all of the registry keys. It's not really wiping all of the files. It's wipe wiping main driver components and uh, DDLs and such, or DLLs, but it's not wiping everything. And if you're not wiping everything and you start installing driver on top of driver on top of driver, you're the kind of person that, hey, I, every time a new game-ready driver comes out or whatever they're calling it from AMD, you're just like 
install, install. Are you doing it every other week? Every time there's a new title, there's a new driver? You'd be surprised how stacked, layered, and corrupted that driver can become over time. The best thing to do, quite honestly, if you're gonna change your graphics card or update your driver, is to do a true wipe of your driver first, then install a clean install. The other thing you're gonna have to do before you can truly get a good clean install is you're gonna have to, one, disable Fastboot. What, it, what Fastboot essentially does is it kind of keeps a, a, a profile running of the driver, but it just applies that profile on the next boot, regardless of what graphics card is placed in there. So for instance, if we, had, we have a 2080 on there right now, and I was to take that 2080 off of there and stick a 2080 Ti on there of a different brand with a potentially different power limit, different boost clocks and all that such, it's gonna apply the 2080 driver the way it's installed to the 2080 Ti, kind of ignoring what the vBIOS is saying it's capable of doing, which can lead to crashes and such. So it's something that I've noticed people do. They'll buy a new graphics card, whether they're updating from an old card to a new card, but if they're of the same brand, like Nvidia or whatever, they take their old card off, they just plop the new one on and go, hey, it's Nvidia, it'll just work. If Fastboot's enabled, it'll apply that old driver to it and you will get all sorts of weird, weird issues. Uh, it's sort of like when you port over an image to a new phone. You got a new phone, you back up the old image and you just copy it over to the new phone with the Android or Apple and you start seeing all kinds of weirdness happen where the best thing to honestly do is just a complete fresh wipe of everything and start from scratch. It's kind of like the amount of people that have told me that they've actually reinstalled Windows to fix these types of problems that are completely unnecessary when these steps would, would truly fix it. So the first thing we're gonna do, and I think we can access this in safe mode, is we're gonna do advanced system settings right here, right? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna also disable um, the automatic installer. See, the other half of this coin is right now, if I DDU and wipe the driver in safe mode, which you wanna do it in safe mode, that's, a, that's the best place to get all the registries wiped because in safe mode, nothing loads except the basic VGA, which is why it looks like this. There's no desktop, background image. The, the bare basic drivers are loaded to make Windows run, which is basic VGA adapter and all of that without any of the, the brand drivers involved, allow you to truly go in there and wipe the registry. If any of those elements are still active in Windows when it's trying to wipe, it won't be able to do it because they're currently active. So you have to do it in safe mode to completely wipe the registry co correctly. But what happens is if you leave the automatic download and installation of drivers on in Windows, when you put your graphics card on or you restart your system, it's gonna automatically reinstall an old version of the driver Whatever the oldest Wickle version is, it's like really old, 4.5.2 in this instance, we're currently on 4.7.2. Then you're stuck putting a new driver on top of an old driver again. And although doing it from scratch, from the basic first download to the latest driver is not as bad as having 15 drivers stacked in between there, it still kind of negates the purpose of why we're doing this video. So we have to turn that off. And to do that, you do advanced system setting properties. We go to advanced uh, hardware, go down here to device installation settings, and we want this. Do you want to automatically download, download manufacturers, apps, and custom icons available for your devices? And we're gonna say no, save changes. Okay, so now that we've dis disabled the automatic install, um, we also had, I, to, to do the non, like to, to disable the fast boot shutdown I mentioned, we have to do that within the full version of Windows, not in safe mode, which is fine. What we're gonna do now is we are gonna go ahead and use DDU. And again, we're gonna do this inside of um, safe mode. Now I'm downloading a latest version. The latest version, um, is, it's always recommended obviously to download the latest version. So we've got our latest version and we need to extract it. It's gonna extract DDU, 1804.4. And now we can run that. Okay, so we can kind of ignore all the typical stuff, but this is where you can sort of determine what all you want it to remove. So we can remove um, remove the driver filter if we want with AMD stuff, remove physics, yes, all of it, because that will all reinstall with the new driver, right? Store config file for roaming folder, we don't want that. Um, prevent downloads from drivers from Windows update when Windows searches for device, driver device. We want that, boom, we don't want it downloading more stuff on us. So now that we've done that, Come over here to device type. You can use this for audio drivers as well, but obviously for video, we want to uninstall our AMD drivers and NVIDIA drivers. See our test bench, 
we obviously put a lot of different hardware in there. Like, I think we've had four different graphics cards on there today alone. And every time we throw a new graphics card on there, it reloads the driver, or if we update the driver, it goes on top of that particular profile. If we switch to AMD, then it enables that driver because we had AMD drivers and NVIDIA drivers. So when I'm done with these types of tests, I will go ahead and remove all the drivers. And as you saw at the start of this video, we had obviously a problem that we have to fix. So this became a necessary procedure for us, one that we were planning on showing you already. It just happened to rear an ugly bug head in the middle of shooting this video. So we decided to go ahead and take you guys legitimately along for the ride on how we're fixing this. So we're gonna uninstall the GPU, which is an NVIDIA driver, and we're gonna click clean and do not restart. I just don't like it to automatically restart. I like to do it myself. This part can take several minutes, two, three, five, 10, depending on how slow your system is, and depending on how many old drivers and registry keys you have in your system. So wait until it pops up and says complete, because it might sit here for a while. There might be times where it gets to the, to the registry key portion, and it's just sitting there and you'll think it froze, it probably didn't. Just give it time. It might take a few moments. It will say it's done when it's done. So we'll come back when it's ready. All right, so it tells us now clean uninstall completed. Would you like to exit now? Yes, so we're gonna exit, which is funny, it didn't exit for me. <laughs> and we're going to do a power cycle, a shutdown, not a restart. Um, I find that restarts sometimes act weird after doing this. So I prefer to do a full power cycle, let it shut down. Walk your butt back over to your system or lean out of your chair, whatever it is, and push the power button. You know, I've been debating actually wiring like a, a power button under my desk at, at home because where it is with black ice, it's like way over to the side. So it could be like one of those emergency police call buttons for like a bank teller. Just like, Ugh. And then that turns on the PC. I'm thinking about doing that. The lifestyles of the fat and lazy. Okay, so if it worked, like we set it up, it should not auto install the driver. It should not, but this is Windows, however. It often will do whatever it wants anyway. So I'm looking to see if install manager or host or whatever appears to see. And so far it doesn't appear to be installing anything. System interrupts, okay, that's fine. System, IQ. Corsair services have started. People always give IQ a hard time. They use just too much power now. I mean, look, it's 0.1% of the CPU. It's, they've really cleaned it up. 0 0.3, 0 0.5 at the most, 0.7. They've really cleaned it up, it's good. Um, okay, so I'm not seeing service host Windows update. I don't know if that's it trying to install it. If it is, then I'll be mad. Can I just end that task? Uh, yes, shut down. Okay, that's fine. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the driver I downloaded, which is 472.12, which is the latest, because I don't want it auto-installing the old one. If the settings that we set were correct, and by the way, every time Windows updates, it kind of like re reactivates that whole download drivers automatically thing which is really annoying. It's like, how many times have you uninstalled OneDrive? Only to have Windows updates put it back. See how it's saying checking system compatibility? If you had the driver installing in the background, you would have had a red message pop up and says an installer is already running. That's how you know Windows is installing it for you already in the background and you don't want that because it won't be the latest. It'll be like 15 versions behind. I don't like to install GeForce Experience. I don't like GeForce Experience. Agree and continue. We can do Express because we don't have any drivers installed now. If you want, you can click custom, and when you go to next, you can click perform a clean install. The problem is almost everyone uses Express for all their driver updates, and that's what causes to the fragmented driver installation over itself a bunch of times. It then starts to lead to problems. So I'm gonna let it clean install. Technically, it's clean install. There's no driver on there yet, right? If I right click the desktop, there's no driver install. So we'll wait for that to be done, which can take you know a minute or two. And it shouldn't need a reboot because there's no driver that it had to clean or remove first. So then we can show you how to disable fastboot. Another way you can tell that that crash that we were experiencing with the black screen and then the blue screen that I showed you or the fact that it didn't come back on at all was driver related. Because no driver is loaded, 
well, it just loaded the driver now, but no driver was loaded and nothing was freezing. That should come back on, see? Our Windows is not crashing now. So that's the kind of problem that someone would experience and be like, what the heck? Something's wrong with my graphics card. It said video failure. I don't know, and, and that's fine. Most people are not fluent in blue screen or understand the problem where sometimes the blue screen is just a symptom of a problem but not actually telling you what the problem is. That was actually a clean driver install that we did right before this video went live. Only because I forgot to turn off the device you know, installer that's automatic, it corrupted. It legitimately corrupted itself on camera. And so we started this video over and I went, hey, because I forgot to turn that off, something happened between the driver it actually installed on the download and me trying to install the new one, it corrupted the driver and that's the experience we were getting. So I accidentally created a situation where someone that's not experienced with computers might have freaked the F out, only I did it on accident. And you can see now everything is perfectly fine with the system because we now have the proper latest driver installed on here with nothing underneath it. 472.12, we're perfectly fine. Now we gotta show you how to disable that fast boot. So now we're gonna do edit power plan, power options, choose what the power buttons do. Now see how this right here was not showing up in safe mode? That's because this is part of the regular Windows install. So you see how I had to click enable disabled stuff? Turn on fast startup, recommended. Frick. Thank you, Microsoft, that's not recommended. Trust me, this is for, if you value your system, you would turn that off and just wait the few extra seconds it takes for your system to boot. So turn off fast startup. That will stop if you have multiple graphics cards or you change your graphics card and then you, it looks like the driver reinstalled itself and everything's fine, it recognizes the card, but it's actually applying the wrong profile to your card. That can also cause problems because we've had overclocks try to apply or boost clocks that MSI Afterburner saves into the profiles of its, of its system or its folders try to apply to a card that looks the same but isn't as stable at the higher core clocks because it might be a higher tier card. And then you enable, you enable crashing accidentally because of that button right there. So there you go. You can see everything is working now. Everything is fine. That's how we deal with a lot of these graphics problems. When I start getting any sort of weird problems, you'll hear me say, all right guys, we gotta DDU this, we gotta wipe it, start from scratch, wipe AMD, wipe Intel, wipe uh, Nvidia, wipe all three. And that will usually get us back up and running exactly as you saw here. I hope this video has helped you. If you know someone having graphics problems, crashing in games, getting weird error message, messages, share them this video. I'm telling you nine out of 10 times this fixes the problem. Thanks for watching guys. Subscribe if you're new around here. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.